Good morning, everybody that came out today. I appreciate it, everybody that's on uh, Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for showing up today. I promise you God is going to bless you with what you're going to hear. Um, you know what I missed? This, is, this, this was prior to uh, the COVID. And we used to do this prior to collecting the offering. We used to be like, you know, everybody greet each other, say hi to each other. What I want you to do this morning is turn to the person next to you and tell them, Jesus loves you. If there's nobody next to you, say it to yourself. Jesus loves you. Because it's the truth. Jesus loves you. Amen. Jesus really loves you. Beyond our understanding, God loves you. But I, I just felt like I had to tell you that, man. And, um, can you believe in a couple of weeks, it's going to be September? What happened to the summer? Wow. It flew by, right? Yeah. <laughs> it flew by. Everything's going fast. Let me just say this. It feels like, and my wife's at home, and, and I'll fill you in more on what's going on at home, but my wife's home, and, and I was talking with her, but um, it feels like yesterday we got married. And it's seven years going on strong. Um, my son Lucas is going to be in first grade this year. My daughter Julia, she's going to high school. I got the shot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but time is flying by. Time flies by. And guess what? In about seven months, there's going to be an addition to our family. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> If I have any advice for everybody out there, is to cherish every moment. Yeah. Because it flies by. Yeah. No matter what's going on in your life, take time for loved ones. Take time for your children, for your spouses, for your parents. You're not going to be there too long. You know, you're going to outlive them, God. You know. Anyway. Anyway, it feels like lately, every time I bring forth a message, there's something that I feel I need to say before I start. So please bear with me. Today's society seems to be watering down the position of manhood. I don't know if you guys are following the news or even in the movies or all these discussions going back and forth about, you know, manhood and our position. For whatever reason, whether it be a plan stemming from the pit of hell or rebellion against the order set forth by God himself. You see, we serve a God of order. Amen. And if we go against that order, there will be price to pay. When there is no order, there's chaos. Yes. If you don't believe me, just take a look at the world. It's in chaos. Everything is being turned upside down. I feel in my heart to say, men, stand up and take up your mantle. Yeah. If you don't know, mantle in this sense means an important role, position, or responsibility. Lead your families. Be constantly in prayer for protection over your loved ones. Godly women, I call to you this morning. Pray for your husbands. Pray for your fathers, your sons, your brothers, that God will make them leaders of their homes and in society for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. We can't take a back seat. We have to be bold. As long as we do it in love, we have to be bold for the truth. We can't take a back seat. And I just felt like I had to say that to you guys. Stand up and take up your mantle. God is with you. And the word says, if God is with you, who can be against you? The creator of this reality is with you. Don't fear what this world thinks it should be going through. Amen? Amen. Amen. I always catch myself yelling. Sorry, guys. So like I said in the beginning, time flies and soon summer will be coming to an end. Everybody is getting out of vacation mode and preparing for September. Mm -hmm. That leads me to this question. If you were going on vacation, would you be satisfied with getting halfway there? Like if you went on a cruise and you paid full price to go to 
Puerto Rico or the Bahamas. But he only went halfway and turned back. You'd be upset, right? You pay full price, so you want what you paid for. You want everything you paid for. Settling for half just won't cut it. What about if you left a job half done at your workplace? Do you think your boss would be satisfied? Giving 50% does not fare well in any aspect of life, especially if you're living for Christ. Look, at times we feel like a half-hearted devotion is okay. It's too extreme to be sold out for Jesus. It's too radical to be completely devoted to Christ. When it comes to living for Jesus, we shouldn't be giving it any less than our all. 100%. How do they say that nowadays, Carlos? Give it 100? You know why? Because he gave it all for us. He paid the full price for our salvation. Jesus Christ died the most horrific death there can ever be. And he did it for you and for me. Today's message is entitled, All or Nothing. Stand for the reading of the word, please. We'll be reading out of John and Luke this morning. John and Luke. Let's start with John. John 3.16. The most known scripture throughout the world from ages 2 and up. Everybody knows this scripture. But we're going to get into the meat of it. John 3.16. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes will not perish, but have everlasting life. Turn with me to Luke 9, 23. This is in the message version. And it reads, Then he told them what to expect from themselves. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me leave. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, to find yourself your true self. Father God, we come before you this morning to praise you and thank you, Lord, because you are so good, Lord. You provide everything we need, Lord, to live and to live righteously according to the Spirit and your Word. I lift this message up before you, Father God, and I ask that you would anoint it. Let it go out. Let it bear fruit in every heart and every mind that is watching today and everybody that's here at church. Father God, we ask for your direction because alone we're nothing. We can do nothing apart from you, O oh Lord. So we ask that you would take control today of our lives and the message. Hide me behind the cross, Lord, and let your will be done. We also lift up our pastor who's in a, another church, be blessing another congregation with a, a special word. I'm sure he's prepared. And we thank you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All right, let me go over really quick with two scriptures. John 3.16, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Luke 9.23, then he told them what to expect. Listen clearly and closely. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me leave. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't. Run from suffering, but embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way. My way to find yourself, your true self. You see, in John 3.16, God gave it all for us. He purchased us, us with the precious blood of Christ, His only begotten Son. Can everybody say that with me this morning? He purchased us 
with the precious blood of Christ. Come on. He purchased us with the precious blood of Christ. Amen. We belong to him. Who here can say that they would give their child for someone? I would. I couldn't. I can't see myself doing that. But God did it. You see, being 50% Christian and 50% worldly is not going to cut it. We can't say we love Jesus. Get ready for truth, okay, church? We can't say we love Jesus and most of the time we are living to gratify our own desires. I said this in my prior message. Living fully for God doesn't mean making room in our lives for Him. It means fully sold out for Christ. Listen to the definition of sold out. Completely committed, devoted, invested, and engaged to a cause. To have no reserve about the decision you are making. To be willing to go anywhere, to do anything, and to give up everything for someone or something. Church, we have to be willing to give it all up for him. Turn with me to Matthew 13, 44 through 46. Matthew 13, 44 through 46. New Living Translation. And it reads, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. In these two parables, Jesus is explaining to us that the kingdom of heaven is like a hidden treasure and we must be willing to give up everything to obtain it. We have to get to a point in our walk with Christ that we become excited about what God is doing in us and through us that we say, Lord, take it all. All or nothing. He wants every part of our lives. Matthew 13, 44 through 46 represents the all and all or nothing. Let's see the flip side of not giving it all to God. Turn with me to Matthew 19, 16 to 22. And this is the message version. Matthew 19, 16 through 22. And it reads, Another day a man stopped Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Jesus said, what do you, Why do you question me about what is good? God is the one who is good. If you want to enter the life of God, just do what he tells you. The man asked, what in particular? Jesus said, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as you do yourself. The young man said, I've done all that. What's left? If you want to give it all you got, Jesus replied, go, sell your possessions, give everything to the poor, all your wealth will be in heaven, then come and follow me. That was the last thing the young man expected to hear. And so crestfallen, crestfallen means like his face was drooped, crestfallen, he walked away. He was holding on tight to a lot of things, and he couldn't bear to let it go. Now that is an example of nothing in the term all or nothing. He thought he had given his all until Christ showed him what, what was the most important thing in his life, his wealth. But it's not just money. It could be anything. It could be Unforgiveness you don't give over to God. It could be jobs or possessions. It could be some sin like pornography. 
It could be our wives and children. We have to give it all to God. You know, there's a scripture in Matthew, and it slips my mind right now. I think it's Matthew 14, if I'm not mistaken, but somebody can correct me later if they want. But in, the, in Matthew it says, God te- Christ is telling everybody, if you love your mother or your father or your son or your daughter more than me, then you're not worthy of me. In scripture, I'm not saying that. And why God? Why is he saying that? God is saying that because you can only pour true love into your mother, your father, your kids, your wife, if you get it from the source. If the source is what you're living for, everything that comes out of you will be perfect. You know, you can love your kids and you can love your mother and your wife or whatever the case may be, but if God is first, you are going to convert people that you love. You are going to pour in what they need. And that's the love of God. And that's the purpose of a Christian, to keep God first. Not because he wants to be like, you know, this big thing in your life, which he should be. But he, he does it for a reason. There's a reason why we have to love God more than anything in our lives. And when we do that, everything that we pour out will bless. Will bless. Amen? Amen. Listen, we have to stop kidding ourselves. There's no way for us to have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. And God accept that. We just read it. The rich young ruler. You think he walked away dejected because it was okay to want riches more than Christ? No. He couldn't give it all to God and he knew it costed him eternity. How do I know that? Well, let's read the question he asked. We'll go over it real quick. It says, another day a man stopped Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternity? So you already know they're speaking. The subject is how to get to eternity. They're talking about eternal life and how to obtain it. Jesus Christ replied, and I'm paraphrasing, give it all or nothing. Give it all or nothing. Christ gave it all, and he is the example. In the second opening verse that we read this morning, or that we read, that is, explains what the all in all or nothing entails. Let's read it again. Luke 9, 23, message version. And it reads, Then he told them what to expect for themselves. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me leave. You're not in the driver's seat I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, to find yourself, your true self. There are three things Jesus mentions in Luke 9, 23 that will help us truly understand the all in all or nothing. Pray you listen intently. You don't want to end up with nothing. Here it goes. Three steps in giving it all. Let Christ lead. Embrace your suffering. Die to yourself. Let's start with let, let Christ lead. Turn with me to John 14, 6. John 14, 6. And it reads, Jesus told them, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Just that scripture alone should have every Christian all in in following Christ. Listen, it doesn't end when you make a proclamation and accept Christ as your Savior. There's also a road we have to walk. If you heard my last message, it was entitled The Narrow Path. On that path, we are to imitate Jesus or follow his lead in every situation, every trial, every heartache, every decision, and yes, even imitate Jesus through the good times. That's what it means to let Christ lead. The second one is embracing suffering. Turn with me to Romans 5, 3. 
Romans 5, 3. And it reads, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. There is a purpose in all we go through. Even when we don't understand it. Even when we don't like it. Which is most of the time. It will help us become more like Christ. Now, I'm going to give you guys a really quick rundown of my last three and a half weeks. A week prior to that, me and my wife, we are rejoicing over the baby she's, she has in her womb. A week after that, my wife gets COVID. And I don't, I'm assuming maybe not everybody here knows, but my wife got COVID back in 2020 and I almost lost her. She was in the hospital and it was like the last scream and God just came through. So she started feeling the same way as she did back in 2020 and now she has a baby in her womb. And I'm going, oh Lord, <laughs> now this, this, this is going to come now, Lord. It's okay, she has the COVID. And on top of the COVID, you know women get that vomiting. Yeah, that whole nauseous feeling, the whole, I don't want to see your face dead, you know, that whole thing. <laughs> and my son ends up getting COVID. And then he's not too, it, it's hitting him, you know, it's, it's hitting him pretty good. But then it seems like you see a light out of that tunnel. And all of a sudden it turns for the worse and my son stopped eating for like three or four days. He stored up everything. He hydrated. And I don't know if you guys know my son, but he's so active. He was like, left. And I'm like, Lord, come on, man. For real? So we end up going to the hospital, pediatrics. Emergency care. And then, uh, thank God he's doing better now. Amen. 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 So Friday I was like, okay, turn the corner. All right, well, I wake up Saturday morning because, you know, we, we got a new one coming. I'm going to go do some OT, babe. I'll be back like in four or five hours. I go to turn my car on and somebody stole my cash from birth. Can you believe that? Somebody running like, and I heard about it for the last couple months, but you never really take it serious until it happens to you. So I was like, <laughs> I couldn't do anything. Listen, if I told you I was perfect through it, I'd be lying. You know, there was a lot of whys. Uh, there was, you know, we have this ring video thing that we could see what's going on. You could barely see the car, but I was like, man, if I. If I find this guy and fill in the rest. But at the end of the day, let me tell you something. At the end of the day, if you're living for Christ, it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. But if you're living for Christ, at the end of the day, you realize that he has everything under control. Amen. And it doesn't matter what you see. It doesn't matter what you see because God has it all under control. This is why we have to give it all to him. We have to give it all to him. We will not be able to come out of it in the same manner if we don't give it to God. Man, Lord, forgive me for my doubting, but I know at the end of the day, it's all about you. I have to say this. When it comes to living for God, Lord, your will be done, not mine. Amen. Amen. So I got a mechanical murder. Got involved in somehow, some way, God found. You know, oh, let me tell you this real quick. There's a, like a, a six to eight month backlog on cars to get your cat converter. You don't want to drive your car without that. You'll sound like you're driving a, 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 a 747 on the road. That's how bad it sounds. But I ended up finding a place to weld one on, and 
I'm here today, so I thank God he is good. Amen. Amen. Devil, you can't win. You're already lost. Yeah. You're already lost. Yeah. You're already lost. Yeah. You're already lost. That's right. The third one is die to yourself. <laughs> Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. Turn there with me, please. This is the ESV version. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. And it reads, put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. And to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. There is no way we can do one and two that we just read from the list unless you do number three, which is die to yourself. You must deny yourself and take up your cross daily. You must trust in the Lord even in the hardest situations. You must discipline yourself to say no to the way of the world. Say no to the way of your flesh. Your life must be all in for Christ. All or nothing. There is a cost in being all in for Jesus. The cost is giving up your own way. Danny has to give up his own way. I'll have thoughts. I'll have desires mainly in the moment. Because we're only human, and until we get to heaven, we won't be perfect. But at the end of the day, I gotta say, Lord, your will, not mine, be done. Amen. 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 We were redeemed through his sacrifice. We are rightfully his. Everybody here and everybody that's watching, we are rightfully God's. He purchased us. He took our place on the cross. But he's not going to force us to accept him. It has to be our decision. It's up to us. All or nothing. It might seem impossible. Through, that, through those three and a half weeks, it, was, it seemed to be impossible to be like Christ through that situation. But let me direct you, let me direct your attention to Matthew 14, 20 to 31. This is not going to be up on the screen because this came to me yesterday as I was doing research for this message. And normally, like, I'll finish on a Friday, but I'll keep reading and stuff. And I've already sent the, the info to Carlos, so that's why it's not there. But if you want to read it, feel free. Matthew 14, 28 through 31. And I'm going to just go over it real quick. This is the story of when Jesus was coming to his disciples as he walked on water through the stormy sea. Everybody remember that? And he called out to Peter and he said, Peter, come. Peter obeyed. And he had enough courage to step out onto the stormy sea and do the impossible. Why? Because he kept his sight on Jesus. Amen. Listen, I'm going to say that one more time because I need it to be embedded in your mind and in your spirit and in your heart. Why? Because he kept his eyes on Christ. At that moment, he was all in. Imagine how amazed Peter was when he was doing the impossible. But as soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus, right, he saw the waves and the storm and began to doubt, which caused him to sink. Listen, we're going to doubt. There's going to be times when we take our eyes off of Christ and our situation is going to look like Mount Rushmore. Amen? Amen? But Jesus says, if you look at me, I'm looking down at that mountain. 
Look at me. Follow me. Be all in for me. You wouldn't have to worry. You see, the Christian walk is that of a stormy sea that seems impossible to get through. But if we keep our eyes fixed on Christ, nothing will be impossible. Amen. Repeat that with me. Nothing will be impossible. Listen, none of us are perfect. We all have our days that we fall short. When Peter started sinking, he called to Christ for help. Jesus reached down and grabbed his hand and pulled him up. You know what that represents? That represents God's mercy and grace. Mercy and grace reached down in our time of doubt when we are not looking at Christ and we're worrying about the world and what's going on in it when it's going to end up God anyway. Grace and mercy reach down for us and say, come on, I love you so much. Jesus, he reaches down to me every day, guys. He reaches down to me and says, Danny, I love you so much, bro. God, I'm going to do. Believe me when I say It will all be worth it. You may not understand it in this moment, but it will all be worth it. Stick with it. Read your word. Spend time at his feet. And in every situation, practice being Christ-like. Take that opportunity to say, Jesus, what would you do? Jesus, what will I do? Tell me. What did I say before? Self-help is no, no help at all. And that's not something that I wrote. It's scriptural. Self-help is no help at all. Sacrifice. Giving up what you think is better. Because God knows what's better. Amen? Amen. I'll close with this. Turn with me to Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28. And it reads... And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called to his purpose for them. When you give your life to Christ, you are called to the purpose you were created for. Amen. Amen. Why would you want anything else? And listen, from the door, when you first dedicate your life to Christ, you can't understand it. It won't be something you can comprehend until you spend time at His feet, read His Word, and do His will. God deserves nothing less than 100%. It's up to you. It's up to me. All or nothing. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we know your throne sits above all things. And all things must submit to your will and bow at your glorious feet. For there is no one like you. Jesus, we know that you took the punishment that we deserve on that cross. And you call us now to the purpose you created us for. We ask that you would Come and abide in us, Holy Spirit, and give us wisdom and understanding as we read the word and as we go through life to be more like Christ in every situation. We know we're not perfect, but you are, Lord. And as long as we keep our eyes on you, there's nothing impossible that we can't do if it's according to your will. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you. <laughs> We love you so much, Jesus. And I know you love us so much more. Your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, we're going to pray right now. Actually, we're going to stop. Uh, 
Mr. Moran, before you do that, I just want to bless you guys. Please seek God's face. Let, let him know that you love him and try to be like Christ. That's the only way we can get through this life. 